now if i uh, talk about this apm1 okay so first of all we'll just start with the downloading and running apm okay so before that if i talk of this apm stuff what is this apm actually all about like if you say that this box is considered as my computer okay and you may say that this is your android phone this is your apm and this could be the device that you want to use fine so let me call it as android and this is your apm and this is your phone now how the interaction will take place just let let me uh, complete this schematic diagram so uh, this whole diagram what it depicts that uh, this is kind of a pictorial representation of your system okay uh, you will be having a android in your system okay consider android or ios okay so considering that you it's a android or a ios okay you have already plugged in the basic essential that you want to use uh, then you have apm with you okay apm is a third party tool that we'll be using and this is your mobile device now how the interaction between all of them will take place first of all the data flow look this arrows indicate the flow of data so the data will flow from your android okay first of all i'm talking of the windows system we'll be covering the windows first and then we'll be switching to the uh, you can say ios stuff so the data will flow from your android or ios to the apm apm gateway you can say and from the apm gateway it will directly trigger it from uh, apm gateway to your mobile phone like i want to automate a device uh, i want to automate a app or anything like that whether it could be whatsapp or it could be a uh, contact manager any 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 app okay whether it's a bloatware app or it's a pre installed app okay we'll talk about this terminologies also later so if what it apm will assist that that it is injecting the app into the phone so that it could be used for the automation purpose this is a you can say simple layman terms how your apm works okay now if i talk of this android okay first of all we'll talk about android then this apm and then about the phone so starting from the first this android one okay give me a second let me annotate it again so in your android you have uh, basically two kind of things okay one is your version okay and second is your api level now first of all what is version okay you have 4.0 like okay then it was 5.0 6.0 7.0 and now it would be 9.0 can someone tell me what is this 4.0 5.0 6.0 7.0 9.0 the versions what is this version in android uh, android version which is uh, which is released by the android android right away from the straight uh, right away from the scratch till today yeah exactly uh like if we talk of your uh, android phones okay right now so it's like i have i have a uh, moto device okay moto g6 it is having android 
okay this 8.0 is pretty being launched by google okay with the name of oreo like 7.0 was the nugget 6.0 was a marshmallow okay 5.0 was a lollipop and so on before that it was a 1.0 was eclair then you have donut these are the different different versions of the android that is being launched by the google every year now google will be rolling out 9.0 in november 2018 okay it will be properly rolled up in all the devices by 2018 november the date is 24th according to the google website fine so normally when like we guys like suppose if i call myself and i say that okay i got a update from android that is 6 i have a 6.0 device normally we say that is 6.0 marshmallow or 7.0 or 8.0 normally we used to talk in this terms but your developers okay like if you, if you talk of your android developer they will never say that i have a 6.0 device or my build is working over 8.0 or 7.0 they talk about the terms of api level that what is this api level like they'll say that i have 16 api level i have 17 api level i have so on you can say uh, 20 25 sorry 25 28 28 is the latest one right now okay so these are the different different api levels that they used to talk and whenever your developer writes a code he never makes it uh, compatible with version he never say that my uh, app will work over 5.0 he only say 5.0 when he know that he is talking to a non technical person if when developer used to talk about themselves in between the team okay they normally talk on terms of api level okay my app is compatible with api level 25 i have upgraded my whole app to 25 level okay so 25 level this corresponds to your 8.0 it means that it will work till 8.0 okay this is the compatibility stuff okay i'm just giving you a overview right now okay down the line when we'll be uh, working over your android your apm we'll talk about these terms more and more this is just a walk through that what is this android all about what is this picture i'm just giving trying to give a trailer of the movie this is just the trailer movie would be coming soon so this is your api level okay so now before moving further uh, like i move further and i uh, install anything okay first of all what i'll do is uh, i just want to know the different different versions of android that you guys are having guys what is the android version that you are having Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Mhm. So I am as you. Uh, Supriya, so just, just a second. Supriya, so yours is seven point zero. Seven point zero. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, just a small question to all. Uh, like every member in the group, you you should have first of all an Android device. Now my only concern is that the Android device you are having, okay. kindly ensure that it is above 6.0 it should be 7.0 8.0 because down the line okay uh we may say that apm or other tools they would be even the android would be stop uh, stopping the support of the previous low end phones they kind of getting obsolete okay and one thing more at the end of this session i'll give you my skype id we'll be creating a skype group so that if anyone has any doubt they can come to the group and they can ask okay so whosoever is present in the group or is active he and she can also ask uh, i have ios that your problem then your voice is breaking uh, i have iphone so so we need a android device okay hey, even i do have uh, ios iphone so i mean ha, is there a way that why do we need a uh, real device can we connect to any of the uh, cloud based platform and then do that no actually we don't work, we don't work over cloud 
so you need a real device to test this stuff. Or you can have an emulator, but I'll advise to have a real device because sometimes uh, when you work over your app, it behaves different on your emulator and your uh, real device. And we don't uh, we don't work over a cloud because you have to pay extra for this cloud version. So what I'll be doing is I'll be working over the real device, but if you have access to cloud or something like that, uh, you can go for the cloud also. Okay. If you could arrange a real device, that would be good. Uh, the call is yours. One question is, so I do have access to the cloud-based source lab. So would you also teach me how do you connect uh, to the APMs and how do we interact with the APM and all that? Basically, we don't cover uh, this cloud stuff. We put the real device in the emulator. Uh, so I have to... Uh, how do I have to know about those connections then? Because my, my company looks standard. I mean, they're using the Perfecto Mobile or SaaS Labs. Uh, yeah, I think the companies use that, right? Actually, there are n number of cloud solutions. And if you back up, like, as far as the Perfecto only, there are more cloud-based solutions. Okay. And they give you some add-on tools, like plug, uh, plugins to use. So what you can do is, I'll, I'll teach you the code, okay? You can deploy it, you try to deploy it. If it works, it okay, not, then we can sync over it. Sure, yeah, at least give an idea on how to do that kind of thing. Sure, 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 sure. But at the end, I suggest that if, if you guys could arrange a real device, that would be good. Like, you could borrow it from your uh, friend, company, anywhere. That would be good, because uh, sometimes some things don't perfect. Uh, if you don't work uh, perfectly over your, you can say, emulator or cloud business, like the location stuff and something like that. Okay. Uh, you say uh, you wish you uh, have Android phone or uh, you think the app supports uh, iOS or Android phone, right? Oh, so, supports Android and iOS phone. But like now, uh, right now, that we'll be starting with the Android from start. Right. So for practice, we need that. Oh, okay. okay. And we are in general, we need to have the Android with the 7.0 onwards, right, Arjun? Look, if you buy a phone from market or if you borrow it from anywhere also, uh, right now the current trend is that every phone in the market that is present part of the 7.0 version. But uh, what I recommend is don't go with this, uh, like, uh, Oppo, Vivo, don't buy these phones, okay? Go for okay. Samsung or Moto. This because uh, why I say Moto Moto is, is the pure uh, Android or Pixel. Okay, these are the uh, pure Android phones, right? Okay. And uh, Samsung is good for uh, testing also. You may good for, go for any Samsung phone also. They, they are also good. These Oppo, Vivo, these are a hybrid Android. Okay, they have written an n number of layers over the Android. So they are not that perfect, uh, Pixel perfect for testing. They're only good for taking selfies and other, other stuff not for the automation and testing development stuff. So just a quick question on this, Aditya. Uh, so you are saying Appium, though it supports iOS and Android, right now you are saying we will start with Android. But in general, Appium has a different set of framework or, or what I should say, uh, uh, code for uh, iOS and Android. So once I love Appium, should it, will it be applicable for both of the, uh, uh, I mean, iOS and Android, or I, I, we need to have a different set of uh, meeting sessions for Android and iOS? First of all, I'll be conducting two different sessions for the setup, like how to set up your code in Android and how to set up your code in iPhone. These are uh, There are two different ways of setting it up. I see. Okay. After that, like you have set up your code. Uh, right. In the market, there are two kinds of apps. One is the hybrid app. Hybrid app is like uh, that is made like you have technology of Sync Touch. Okay, you have any you have n number of third parties. Okay, when you make an app in third party, that is not the native one. Like for native, you use for iPhone native, you use Swift or Objective C. Similarly, for Android, you use Kotlin or Java to develop the app. These are the native that are provided by the Google and Apple. 
if you don't use these uh, programming languages to code, you use a third party like Sencha Touch. In Sencha Touch, when you write a code, it is written for both on a same uh, same uh, platform only. Like those kind of apps, like your bank apps, I suppose ICICI app, or you can say any bank app. Okay, mostly those are written in a hybrid framework only. So. In case of those, because your XPath is same for your iPhone also and Android also, right? Your XPath is not changing. So you may write the same code, okay, that will work in your iPhone also and Android also. I'll teach you about that. Okay. But if your code is written in a different set of language, like suppose for Android, like I am your Android developer, okay, and you are the iPhone developer, you are using your uh, native object C, I am using my native Java. Okay. So XPath would be different, right? For every element. Because you you might uh, give some different name to IDs, I might, might name uh, give some different name to the IDs. The IDs would be different. Okay, their uh, their relative positions could be a little bit different, right? So the X path would be different. So in that way, what you can do is you can write if for else block like for iPhone this code should work or Android this code should work, or you can write a different set of code for iPhone and different set of code for Android. That totally depends upon your business requirement. That what kind of app you are automating like while while we'll be covering about this uh, i uh, you can say android okay i'll also because side by the side with iphone android i'll also cover the iphone concepts also like for android we used to do in this way for iphone it has to be done in this way but the setup is totally different for both the platform because this is windows system iphone you need a mac so in mac the setup is totally different from this thing so the piece of code which we write for Android supporting uh, uh, mobiles and uh, iOS supporting mobiles will be the same. The setup is different. So, for example, if it is Java for native Android, then same piece of code will work for iOS as well, right? Is that I'm getting right? Uh, depending upon your XPath. Okay. Depending upon your XPath. We'll, we'll talk about this XPath, uh, XPath that how these XPaths are there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yep, thank you. Okay, so first of all, in the market, if you talk about, there are four kind of tools that are being present. Okay, so the one is, one is Calabash, another one is APM, then you have Selendroid, and then you have, then you have iOS driver. Okay, so now uh, we are working over APM. First of all, the co uh, question is why APM? I have more tools like uh, Cell Android, APM, oh, sorry, not APM, Cell Android, Calabash. Why not to choose these tools? Why we're choosing APM only? What is the main need of using APM? So let's go with some pictorial representation stuff. Okay. Uh, first of all, take this as your APM. This is your Android. iOS driver. First of all, as the very name says, iOS driver, it is only implemented for the iOS. You cannot work it in both the platforms, Android and iOS. Okay. So you can say down the line, we cannot use this. Just a second. Okay, so we won't be using it because this is only implement for the iOS. Now, if I talk of uh, APM first of all, okay, it works with your iOS and Android. This cell Android, it only works with Android. And this Calabash, it also works with both. Okay. 
Now in this APM, you have two modes of running APM. One is no APK. Another is with APK. I'll talk about this APK. What is this APK means? Okay. Needs it. Now, first of all, what is this APK? It is the executable file from your Android. Like if you'll see that uh, you're like you have WhatsApp, you have Facebook, you have different different apps in your phone. Okay, every app in your phone is having some extension. Like for Android phone, it's dot APK. Okay, like uh, if you'll see your Windows phone, or you see your window like a Windows mach uh, machine that I am using. Every executable in my Windows, it is with the extension .exe. Okay, if you have noticed. Similarly, for Mac, it is .dmg. Okay, Mac will like Mac system will only install that file if it is having the extension .dmg. Similarly, Windows system will only install <coughs> the file which has the extension .exe. Similarly, for your mobile Android phone, it will only install the application which would be having the extension dot apk if this dot apk is not present that what android operating system does is it do not take it as an executable file you say that there's something else i cannot install it okay similarly for your iphone it is dot app okay or you have a, if it's a signed or unsigned depending upon the version so these are the different different uh, you can say extensions that are being used so for Android, it is .apk, similar to Windows, like .exe. Now, if I come back to the APM, I've written here, it is, it is work with no APK and APK mode. The thing is that, like suppose if I have already have an APK installed in my phone, in my uh, Android phone, APM still can uh, counter that APK and run over it. Look, I know right now what I'm ta uh, talking is, it would be a, just a bounce ball. Okay, but down the line, eventually, like the classes will grow. Okay, you will come to know more and more about this stuff. Okay, right now, because this first class is just a walkthrough. That like this is present in APM, and we will be using APM in uh, this fashion. Okay, so this, what APM does is whether if your APK is present in your phone, your app is installed in your phone, or is it not installed? Okay, in both the scenarios, the APM can work. Okay, but in case of your cell Android, it is the hardcore requirement of your cell Android that you need the APK. Similarly, the case with the uh, Calabash. Now I come to, I'll come to the next point. Okay, we support the multiple languages like it, you could write your, co uh, write your code in Java, okay, Python, uh, you could use Ruby, Similarly, uh, this also gives multi-language support. It is best compatible with Ruby. It works over there, but its compatibility is better with Ruby. Okay, and it works over BDD. BDD is behavior driven development that is totally present in the Ruby. So, due to this limitation, because this BDD is quite tough, this is not so much user friendly. Okay, only due to this uh, stuff, okay, this Calabash is losing its uh, hold in the market. Because if you compare it to all the tools, okay, compare these three tools, this gives you option of all the APKs and all that stuff, okay. Even this gives you multi-language support. Suppose like we are doing it in Java, okay, tomorrow anyone from the uh, Ruby background or Python background wants to learn this APM, they can also do it in the same fashion. But for Calabash, you need to learn Ruby only. This is a hard code requirement and you should be aware of your BDD and Cucumber stuff. 
so due to this uh, its ma market hold is guys please go on mute thank you so due to this its market hold is decreasing day by day okay like someone uh, uh, spoke about something like perfecto sorry aditya i had a question that there is an i am muted can i go ahead okay. uh, no. uh, you want me to ask later there is a problem noise uh, it's because of my fan just give me a minute and switch off the fan and ask you the question thank you yes okay so uh where was i right so due to this uh calabash uh, because it is more ruby based so it is not being uh, more used okay now we only left with these two apm and salent right now which tool to use because in this whole fight only these two are left this apm and uh, uh, salent right your apm because we talked about the api level okay so your apm works only till api level 16 and apm star, uh, sorry salent right and uh, apm starts from api level 17 api level 16 means your device with operating system as 4.0 and this will start from 5.1 so if you see the market okay right now i think there is no device that is using this version 4.0 your google has rolled up all the devices from 5.1 and so on even the 5.1 is very few in the market now mostly devices are with the 6.0 and if your uh, your device is more upgraded one you have a better uh, hardware it would be 7.0 8.0 and in november it would be 9.0 so that is why okay your apm is being used cuz normally people used to ask me that okay should i learn a android or should i learn apm so the question should not be should i learn this or that it should be actually you better know that which tool to choose if you are working over ap level 16 below the ap level 16 you are working over 4.0 3.0 2.0 1.0 like the eclair donut and those devices are not present even the google play do not support them uh, if you have a device with 4.0 and you want to download the app even google play restricts you like you have a uh, 180 million apps in the google play and out of 180 million only Uh, i think 50000 apps are uh, already available for not 50000 also the number is more when it's 20000 apps that are being available this with this 5 or 4.0 device out of that number only this thousands are available so down the line after this this december there would be no support for this 4.0 device also so that is why now you guys can better choose that which tool you want to learn whether it's apm or your salendroid depending upon your requirement fine so we'll be talking about this apm so if you talk of this perfecto mobile solutions okay someone spoke that term so let's go to that link perfecto mobile.com no okay i'm not getting the page actually uh, because uh, back that time perfecto gave some uh, rankings like the github ranking 
so in that github ranking uh, facto gave the you may say rank one to the apm being the best tool being used for the automation okay i'll get the link and i'll share the link with you guys right now i'm unable to get the link uh, just a second man just a second yeah so hello can you hear me yes uh okay just a second i think there is some problem with my speaker let me change the headphone just give me a second just a second yeah someone was asking something hello guys yes we can hear you aditya yeah someone someone was asking some question okay so uh hello okay look this is all about the basics of your apm like this is base uh why apm why to choose apm what are the api levels okay yeah subhash was going to ask something but yeah uh sorry i'm back uh... So, can you guys hear me? I'll just switch off the fan. Sorry for that. Uh, background voice, right? Now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. So, first thing is, uh, uh, you know, uh, just show us like uh, the course which you would be covering, the course content. Mm-hmm. Was it? I didn't get it. The the course, uh, like what all do you cover in the APM class? Okay, I'll share the course also. By the way, when you join the session, I think uh, the person who has contact you, whom you have contacted, okay, he didn't provide you any course content. Ah uh, no, actually, and uh, it's it's mentioned on the website also that we'll be covering this stuff. Okay, no issues. I'll I'll cover it again. I'll share it. Sure. and another question is so uh, first regarding this introduction what you have covered so uh, regarding the frameworks uh, you said that uh, we you would be completely teaching us the framework right so right what type of framework would you teach us uh, yeah there are uh, there are three kinds of framework mm-hmm. uh, i could hear you what is back uh basically there are three frameworks in the market one is hybrid framework another is spom that is page object model and third one is uh, the composite one okay so gradually when we will you'll work with the code okay you will be the better judge to answer that which framework you guys want to learn because i'll ask you uh out of three i'll teach you the one okay another two are basically present on the website so when we'll be covering uh, the basics of uh, this uh, android and i of iphone okay so before that i'll ask you and you will be in a position to answer that which framework is best uh, suited to, uh, to your environment okay uh, see right now we are using bdd uh, title driven itself uh, with cucumber and uh, uh, we are using java instead of ruby so on top of it you would suggest us to build a apm framework or uh, uh, how do you go uh, that perspective okay first of all uh, you don't need that okay because the framework that i'll be talking about is that is a totally different uh, natural if uh, you can say that <clears throat> like suppose you have a excel file okay like uh, normally you used to write some task cases in your excel okay and you used to present it Uh, you're you're talking about test data driven TDD. Kind of test driven data driven, you can say kind of, not exactly, but kind of. Uh, it should be TDD, kind of. So in that TDD stuff, according to you, TDD. Okay. So uh, what I'll what we'll do is the same Excel that you are using to present it to someone. We'll be automating the same Excel. We won't be making a different Excel or different test cases to run. We'll. Uh, we'll try to uh, take the data from the excel so that this like suppose you have prepared a data and that you want to be shared across anyone 
So the same data you would be encapsulating in your app. Only the Excel sheet would be the deciding body that uh, what code snippet you want to run. And your code would be in such a way that even tomorrow if you change the Excel, your code will never break. It will work for the Excel. That, would, that, that is the latest stage right now. It's too early to talk about that stuff. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand. Right the only question I had is because see, uh, without using Selenium, can we build our own framework with APM? Look, Selenium, uh, APM is written at the top of Selenium only. Right. APM so we have to have so some, uh, you know, already uh, developed framework with Selenium. On top of it, we'll use different no, uh, functions. No, okay. no, 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 no. I'm saying. APM is written at the top of Selenium. This means that down the line we'll be using the APM commands, not, oh, sorry, the Selenium commands. We'll be using the Selenium commands, but the framework would be different. Framework would be totally different from your uh, Selenium one. That's right, that's right. I, I got that. But still we can use the same framework is what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that totally depends upon you. You you can just emulate the existing framework of your Selenium and you can mm -hmm. uh, you can just inject your APM in that. That will totally work. Right. Uh, because we have an application, web application, which works on uh, you know browsers as well as mobile apps. They have native apps as well as the hybrid. Right. So the same code should work on everything. That's yeah, the only yeah. thing. Yeah, that, that is what you are doing. What you are doing is that uh, someone has written the code, and you are, uh, you know, someone has made the framework. You are injecting your code into that. That will anyhow work. What I was trying to explain was that you guys would be in such a position that you could create a framework. Now, what you are doing is someone has created the framework. You are trying to inject your code. What I want is at the end, this will work. I'm not saying this will not work. At the end, you should create a framework, and others should inject their code into it. Right. Okay. So I'm trying to explain what what difference I want to make it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Anyone with any other doubt? Because look, this was just a grooming session, and that is pretty uh, pretty done by me. Okay. Just I want to explain about the basics, the API level. We have talked about that. Now, from tomorrow, we'll start with you can say the setup, how to set up your APM into your machine. So, before I close the session, anyone has any doubt? Uh, Aditya, I have one question. Mm -hmm. um, will we be getting the these uh, the training videos uh, access? Uh, I mean, the the site on the QTP Selenium site. Uh, we will get that. I know, but how about these training videos? The one which you are right now conducting. Those we get the access as well. Yeah, well, you'll be getting the access, but uh, for the first two videos, I mean, for the first two, three days, you won't be getting any access after the third class. Okay, uh -huh. you'll be getting access because uh, the first two classes are the trial classes. Okay. okay, okay. So after that, all are paid classes. Right. So right. the person who has enrolled, like after the third class, okay, uh -huh. they would be getting access to all of them. So we, uh, what our IT team used to do, uh, do is they used to upload the videos after the third only, third class only. Okay. So means the third day today is Monday, right? So by Wednesday you may be getting all this stuff. Like the person who who might be a paid members, so that will be getting access of this video. And one thing more, I just want to uh, highlight: uh, APM has rolled a new version that I'll be teaching in this class. Means you are the first guys who I'm teaching this stuff because the previous classes, the persons whom I have taught us that was the previous version of APM. Now they have rolled up a new version. So the videos uh, till the setup and few more videos. I'll, I'll explain you which videos are those that are kind of uh, old videos that are present uh, in the QTP site. So I'll recommend this not to follow them. Okay, you may follow these uh, videos because these are the stuff that we will be doing in this session. That would be the latest one. Okay, like but if you want to go with the previous version of it, you want to know or you want to learn that what was there, that is good to go for you. But I'll advise that uh, while you are watching our videos, uh, do watch these videos also at the end because this is linked to the latest Android and APM. Because look, like Android has rolled up 7.0, 8.0, and 9.0. That needs some user permission. You might be aware of the fact. Okay, Google has uh, drastically changed the operating system. Okay, 
those all those uh, you can say uh, stuff was not present in the previous version of apm there were some limitations uh, the uh, you can say the previous was the 1.6.2 or one version of apm was the least uh, stable version okay and that has some bugs also so apm has come up with a, a better solution and a better one that i'll explain you tomorrow also like when we'll go to the website of apm okay i'll show you that what they have changed what is being new rolled out and all that stuff okay any other doubt so as a paid user we will get access to two types oh, of videos one is on the site which you have already might be old and the one which you are conducting right now the latest one right right exactly oh okay sure like you have subscribed to this course so these videos are quite obviously present for you Uh -huh. but the uh, old one are also present for you like suppose who have not paid for this they would be only getting access to the old one not to this class videos okay perfect okay yeah thank you and so from tomorrow you want uh, 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 you are saying the device need, uh, need to be there right from tomorrow but from tomorrow no, session no no it, it's okay tomorrow we'll be just installing the stuff okay just the setup would be there so it would be great if you uh, we guys could arrange a device uh, by tomorrow or day after tomorrow or okay. within a day or two that would be good you don't need to buy it you may borrow it from your friend or something but, like that but meantime, uh, but meantime if i if if uh, you know i don't have the device so then you will be having some uh, i mean you will giving some uh, idea about the emulator as well right i mean yeah i could i can give the idea i could give the idea of the emulator also uh, okay. but uh, like the same like uh, if you talk of the uh, jenny motion the uh, emulator given by third party or uh, say the google has its own emulator that emulator is only for some specific devices only the devices being given by google like pixel okay nexus these are the google made devices so emulator is also present for these devices only the native emulator i'm talking of not talking of the third party paid emulators i'm talking of the native emulator that that is free and provided by google so down the line they only work over the devices that google has provided means the best devices google has given so the emulator would be best in that case if you buy your own device because that like is for just for example like i'm okay. using a motor device suppose you have a samsung device that is not a pure uh, google device okay and not that is not the best device that is given by google it's not a pixel so your app may be laggy app may be crashing <clears throat> in that scenario you could you could write a better snippet like okay my app is being slow in this case in this device so it could be slow in other devices you could correlate it but if you are like you have the best os like if talk of a pixel pixel is the best device in the market right now it's the best device in the hardware and everything okay in your pixel your app will never crash because it will never get laggy and slow you getting my point what i'm trying to explain mm -hmm. Okay. So this will only work with the mobile, or uh, I can get a tablet as well. This IPM will work on any of the uh, devices which support Android and iOS, right? So tablet is also fine. Is that tablet? True? Yeah, tablet is also fine, but tablet don't have a better hardware. Your phones have better hardware. I see. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Because and one thing more, your maximum devices like suppose if. Uh, mostly people who used to design the app they are not uh, tab compatible but surely they are mobile compatible okay so i think pixel is the right one to uh, no pixel is the most costliest phone you don't need to go and buy it you don't need to spend okay. so much money just go to, like if you want to buy a new phone okay. any phone under 10k like uh, for example moto g6 i have also bought it yesterday for testing only it's just 10 to 12000 you may buy this phone this is good for testing Just buy a cheap phone. Don't don't go with the just Chinese kind of brands. Okay, let me.